In the rainforests of West Papua, there lives a tribe that is one of the most ancient and isolated cultures on Earth. The Korowai were not visited by outsiders until around 40 years ago, when anthropologists and missionaries returned with stories of cannibalism, Stone Age tools and extraordinary houses built in the trees. Over the years, other documentaries have been made about them, but most film crews visit only once, and everything will have been set up for them in advance by a producer or local fixer. In this series, I want to try something different. In order to get closer to the heart of Korowai culture, I'm going to go back to the same place four times over the course of a year. And this time, nothing has been prepared for me. I have no idea who or what I will find. On my first trip, I discovered that many more Korowai than I thought have left the forest and are now living in government-built villages. But in a remote tree house, I met Holt and Halla, who's known locally as Whitebeard, and their adopted son, August. Oh, August told me that he had chosen to remain in the forest to look after his uncles, along with his wife, Amel, and two kids, Doddy and Sun. There's three generations of Korowai people living in that house. That is a lot of different pairs of eyes to see life in this forest through. And they're the first people that I've met that are genuinely living in the forest. They are living it, you know? They are genuinely living in this way. Now, three months later, I'm returning for my second trip. But things are destined to get much more complicated than I imagined. My name is Will Millard, I'm a writer and adventurer. For the last decade, my fascination with West Papua has seen me crisscross the province many times. In that time, I've learned to speak Indonesian, but the traditional Korowai speak only their own language. So I've asked a local translator, Perez, to come with me. Whitebeard's family treehouse is a four hour walk from the nearest village of Muara. So I've also hired a cook and team of porters to help me and my film crew carry all our food and equipment. Oh, we must be getting close now. I think I remember this bit. Oh, heart's quickening. Been thinking about this moment pretty much every day since I left them. But I'm worried about the impact of so many people turning up at Whitebeard's house. So before I left, I asked my local producer Shinta to arrange for a small camp to be built, half an hour's walk from Whitebeard's house. Hey, Ibu Shinta, Apa Kabaha. Wow, look at this place. Yeah. You guys have been busy. It's a mess. How are you? I'm good. Oh, it's good to see good you guys. Oh How have you been? You been all right? I'm okay. You need. There it is. So, wow, I had a, I had a rambut. Yeah, you've got a beard going on. Nice one, man. Apa kabar? Bike, bike. Bike, bike. So, Lee had history under Dananak, America bike. Yeah, Suda Gamut, Bagus Kali. Yeah, Suda Bagus. Bagus, man. I feel terrible. I wanted to try and protect Whitebeard's family by building our camp away from their treehouse, but this is much larger than we need and much closer to the treehouse than I'd ever imagined. Look at that. Look at that. This is insane. Nobody other than me seems worried about all the trees that have been cut down. It's like a bomb's gone off. And the forest is not the only thing to have changed while I've been away. And so 
son has been learning how to use the handicap. Son? Yeah. Son is wearing clothes. <laughs> I didn't recognize you. Son. Hapa kabar, a bike bike? Bike bike. Bike bike. Oh, you yeah. speak Indonesian now too. Yeah. Sudah tau? <laughs> 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 di mana, di mana kaka? Agus di mana? Di situ. Di situ? Di yeah. situ? He's over there? Di sini, di sini. Di sini, di sini. This is so weird. Is that Agus there? I don't know, everyone's wearing clothes, I can't recognise anyone. Hello! Oh. Right, right, some water bike? Some water bike. Yeah? Some water bike. Dodi, Dodi, Sun, Dodi. Hey man, ada hamil? Not happened yet then. Okay, cool. August. Africa bike. Man up. Some water bike, August. Some water bike. Yeah. Some water tower bahasa. Laut itu ikan laut itu ada ini. Yo, bagus, yeah. What is going on? What's going on? I'm a little bit surprised how much has changed. Alka speaks Indonesian. Sun is fluent. Everybody's wearing clothes. Um, what if Whitebeard's going to be in a tuxedo on top hat? <laughs> oh, Taman. Yo. <laughs> Thank God you're the same. <laughs> I don't think I could have coped with any more. Man up. Oh dear. Tao Bahasa Indonesia? Does not speak Indonesian. Okay, great. <laughs> not everything's changed. Wagus. My second trip could scarcely have got off to a more uncomfortable start. I wanted to come here to learn about a family of people living in a very traditional way, but it's becoming clear that August and his family are not quite what they seemed when I first met them. On top of that, it is increasingly apparent that just my presence here, with all the extra baggage that a film crew brings, is in danger of changing the very thing I came here to record. So good to see you. Oh, man up. Man up. Well, a lot's changed, my friend. Tida sama de sini. Ada orang pakai bajau, August dan adik bisa bicara bahasa Indonesia. Saya bodok sekali, saya bodok. Ini nonon mau lidi. Well, <laughs> This is a really simple question, Belles. August, Daddy Mana. Itu saja. August, why you brush your holiday? August, why you brush your holiday? You believe you should have a full lago, you are right, but look if you know you must, you should have a full lago, you are a lot of more. You better than a little more. You also have a clay, I'm very large. You walk like you walk by your eye, I was your cousin. Sekarang dia orang muara sudah dia bilang. It turns out that when August first heard that I was looking for a traditional family to film with, he left his village and brought his wife and kids into the forest and moved back in with his elderly relatives. He imagined that, like other film crews who have come before me, 
I was only going to be interested in the very ancient Korowai way of life. But what I'm beginning to see is that the modern Korowai, who are moving out of the forest and into the villages, are just as important. Early the next morning, I wake up to the sound of a baby crying. August? Bisa? Bisa jalan? Bisa masuk? During the night, August's wife Amel gave birth, and now she's resting in a special birthing hut that he built for her away from the camp. Mano. Mano. Wow. <laughs> oh, hello. Congratulations, Mano. Lambang. Lamban. Lamban. Yeah, Lamban. Bahasa Korowai. Bahasa Korowai. Lamban. Please, Chantik Skali, yeah? Chantik Skali. Very beautiful. Jamborapa. Tidak tahu, saya tidak lihat. Tidak lihat? Sampai pagi bangun, lihat. Oh, tidak ada. Tidak ada di sini. Oh, sudah lah. Malu, sudah api bawa api begin api. Bagus. Saya email email sendiri. Iyo ya mau sendiri. Tang potong potong. Tang potong. Siapa siapa potong ini? Ini sendiri sendiri sendiri. Email sendiri. Iyo ya sendiri. Good grief. Email did everything herself on her own. Saya tidak dengar. Who's nowhere to be seen? Delivered and then cut her own umbilical cord. That is that is hardcore by any measure. Potong pakai apa? Oh, ini saja. Ini saja. Ini tu. Yeah. Kamu sudah ambil? Ini yang ini tidak biasa ambil. Ya. Yang ini boleh. Dan dan kamu tidak bisa? Tidak bisa. Tidak bisa juga. Yeah. Wow. August isn't even going to hold his newborn daughter. The arrival of the baby seems to bring mixed feelings for the family. Perez explains that some Korowai have a fear of blood, as they believe the smell attracts witches who cause sickness. <laughs> Apparently, Amel will sleep with her newborn in the birthing hut for the next few days. Like many Korowai women, she has tattoos on her face to protect against witches. The marks were made by using acid from a torch battery because they believe that batteries have magical properties. The next time I hear someone back home complaining because they can't afford the latest pushchair, 
they've got to go with some lesser model. I'm going to think about Amel giving birth on her own in the middle of the forest. And then... <laughs> you know, this is... this. Look at this. This right here. I mean, this is the irony, right? You think that they've lost their culture because they're wearing clothes or walking around with some fancy umbrella. There's a woman over there who's given birth on her own in the forest, cut her own umbilical cord, is now looking at five days under there in the rain, in the middle of the rainy season. This is the coral eye. This is, this is, this is, this is how it is. Yo, man up. 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 Oh yeah, bad bomb. Bad bomb. Bad bomb. Bad bomb. Yo. Now that I know that August only visits Holp and Halap occasionally, it's clear I've underestimated these two old men. Living alone in the forest, almost entirely separate from the modern world. Magus. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little skink, isn't it? Mobau. Ibe. Ibe do I not believe you to Bolgalo? Ima to never go to. Indiwa. Blue lava can eat all the whole. Can eat all the whole. About all the moon roof to a patungala. Wow. Got it, got it. Yeah, come on. Yes, gotcha. <laughs> Oh, Vagus. Look at that. Unbelievable. I'm getting an education here, Varys. Any guru, sire? Hope and Halap have lived through experiences that I can't imagine. They grew up in a world where tribal warfare and cannibalism were real threats. But it's easy to forget that for almost all of human existence, this is how we all lived. But their way is dying out, and it's impossible to know how much longer they can last in the forest. And when they're gone, all their first-hand knowledge of the natural world will go with them. Whether in the forest or the village, the Korowai all live off Sago a flower made from the fibrous core of a giant rainforest palm. 
It's one of the few carbs that doesn't rot in the damp jungle. Sai mau. Manok trobo. Manok trobo. Mm. Mm. It's a little bit spicy. It's quite crunchy. It pops in the mouth. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Hanging out with Hope and Halap is incredibly seductive, and it's easy to forget that their adopted son, August, with his shorts and T-shirts, is just as much Korowai. <coughs> his experience of moving out of the forest and into the government-built villages is the experience of almost all Korowai now, as they push to become part of the modern world. Clearly, life here is far more complicated and fascinating than I'd first realized and I'd like to spend time with August at his home too. Untuk anak dia, dia tinggal di hutan atau tinggal di kampung? Kenapa kampung? Mm -hmm. August, Kita Bisa Pulan. You don't know. Oh no, August, do look Siddiqui. August, Tida Mao. Janga Mara, August. I'm so naive, so naive that I thought I could just come here with the cameras and capture something truthful about coral wildlife. What an absolute fool. Now I'm here and I'm in this situation, I realise that basically everything that I brought with me has utterly swallowed and permanently altered the way that they behave. Of course it has. August and I are in a stalemate. Try to engage him in conversation, doesn't want to talk. Try to say that I'm just as interested in his life back in the village. And he sort of shrugs his shoulders. It's like in his mind he has a fixed set of things that he does for people like me. To try and break the stalemate, I've asked my translator Perez to find out what's going on. The biggest mistake I made is coming back. There is no page two to the script. There is no more to see. People don't come back. People like me don't come back here asking for more. 
And that's why we're stuck. All right, white bike. Well, some of this is to do with the fact that Alfred thinks you're angry with him because he has gone to live in the village. Oh, Jangan. Tajang Amara, Kerna Kamu Tingle the Kampung August, Kida Apa Apa. Um, Hello. Oh, this is so silly. Okay, bagus. I know, bagus. Yeah, tida papa. Yeah. Try tida mara. Saya melihat kamu di kampung biasa saja, lah. Tida papa. Don't fix Saya. It is okay. It's too bike. Did that Papa? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bag with Scarly. It's been almost impossible to persuade August that his life in the village is interesting to me because it's not as obviously exotic as Holp and Halaps. But now we have more of an understanding between us. He has finally agreed that when I come back on my next trip, I can stay with him and his family in Wara. But for now, I want to get to know Holp and Halap better. And to do that, I need to shake off this circus that I've created in the forest. So, no film crew, no porters, no cooks. Just me and Perez to translate. Ayo, bos pusat satu ya. Gimana? Yang ini. Me being here changes the way things are. But I tell you something for nothing. All of this stuff here, having 30 plus people, crew, camps, food, all of our toys, it's just a massive distraction. I reckon I'm going to get a much better understanding of what it's like to be a traditional coral white if I'm just here with a small camera, and that's it. So that's it. Everybody must go. <laughs> I've had enough. That's it. And OK, I might not find some great truth. I'm not suddenly going to become some coral white warrior. That's not going to happen. But I reckon I'll get a much better understanding if it is just me and them without all of this behind me now. Man of Trobo, Jalan Bike Bike, yeah, Hati Hati. Yo, Teramakasi. Nanti, yeah? Nanti Sai Kembali. Yeah. All right, guys, I'll see you later. Oh, no. Yeah, I'll see you in a week. How are you feeling? It's really happening, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I hope this is a good idea, Gavin. Uh -huh. It's ready, Mike. <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't need this anymore, do I? Bellows, be sir. And Bellini. Take care, bro. Try not to get yourself killed, huh? I'll do my best. Okay, take care. Do <laughs> well. Take care, guys. Bye. Jeez, that's it. They've gone. Wow, that's it. Kita sendiri, taman. Sendiri. Perez di mana? Kita ada Perez. Kita ada Park Halap. Hope di belakang. 
What will we do now? Wow. Tidak ada orang. Tidak ada orang. That is crazy. Oh, empty this place is. Perez, Whoa. Kita, Raja, Dihutan. Yeah. We're the kings of the forest. Christ. I've been in the forest on my own many, many times before. But that's always been on expeditions where I've been moving through an environment. I've never actually just downed tools and stayed somewhere. Hopefully, this is going to be fun. Hopefully. Hope had a panajuga. Hope Kamu Rindu, uh, Chari Bintang. Oh, yeah. Man up. Man up. Words cannot describe the dryness of this food. It's like eating the Sahara. Sagu. Sagu. Adahujan, makan sagu. Makan sagu. Tidak ada hujan, makan daging. <laughs> hujan besar. If it's just raining all day, you can't get out there. The rivers are full of water. The forest is sodden. All the insects, all the lizards, all of the big mammals, the birds, everything is doing what we're doing, which is hunkering down and waiting for it to pass. How depressing. <sighs> For the next 10 days, it will be just the four of us alone in the jungle. And though I assumed it was going to be tough, I didn't think life in the forest was going to be quite so monotonous. It's been eight hours straight now. Mail Fobo. Mail Fobo. But at least I've learned the word for rain. <laughs> We're off, finally. It's not a huge amount of time left in the day. Oh, it's so wet. Everything's soaked. started making our way up this little river. Keeping up with our lap is pretty tough. Lucky he's wearing red, otherwise I'd be lost. We're there. The river. We're here to check the fishing lines that Hope left out the day before. Ada Ikan. Oh yeah? Ada? Yes! Get in, Baguskali! Yeah! <laughs> Man of trouble! 
Oh, we don't just have to eat Sago tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Matty, that's killed it. Oh, yeah, my This is like opening a parcel on Christmas morning. <laughs> it's so exciting. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Kalau tidak ada sagu. I wouldn't have him to It's a good one, can. Yeah. Tell him I can, Smell. It's 4.30 in the morning. Says it all, really, doesn't it? <sighs> There's nothing you can do. It's stuck inside, waiting for it to stop. Oi, ban, we need to grab one of them. That's the the more you more grab one. Apache. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Betul. Betul, they're too Betul. Yeah. I decided to change my psychological approach to Sago. I love it. Mmm, I'm great. Maybe it's me, maybe I just don't understand, maybe maybe I just don't get it. I come from a place where you're constantly productive and, and to kind of sit around and do nothing is, is, is frowned upon. So I think that there's part of me that's, that's constantly kind of gnawing to go out and, and do something, no matter what it is. <laughs> I'd actually like to have that filled with Sago now. I miss it. <coughs> it's dawning on me that Hope and Halep live their whole lives in the present. In a world where the forces of nature are so great, there's little point in worrying about tomorrow. All that counts is what happens right now. With no written language, the Korowai only experience the past as memories and stories which can easily fade or be forgotten. Even the tree houses themselves only last a few years before the jungle reclaims them. 
as if time itself stands still. And for me, adjusting to this ancient way of life is nigh on impossible. Sai chape skali dengan hu janini. You made all of us eat dinner. I will get an order on all your order. Man up. Man up. I don't know if you're going to go on the road. I don't know if you're going to go on the road. I don't know if you're going to go on the I'm starting to feel really exhausted. Just keep feeling like I want to just sit down and... Oh, tunggu teman. Kita capek dan lapar. Lapar sekali teman. Lapar sekali tapi kita tidak ada makanan. Untuk sudah berapa hari now? Satu minggu lebih? Satu minggu, satu minggu, satu hari. Satu minggu, satu hari tidak ada kita... makan. Wow. Banjir. Banjir besar. With the river so fast and high, the chances of catching anything at all are remote. And fishing today feels like a waste of precious energy. Come on. Oh no, it's a stick. Oh. 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 Hey, hello. Tida ada teman. Can we buy a bike? This is about as bad as it gets. It's unseasonably bad, even for the rainy season. Dia tidak datang. Pahala bilang sudah dari tadi keluar. Yeah. Yeah. Saying good. There's about half an hour of light left. Munkin had a problem, Macau. Munkin. 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 Oh, he's here. Oh, hey, Hope. Oh, come on. Well, <laughs> Hope casually strolls in five minutes before it's pitch black outside with food. I don't think Halap's forgiving him though. He's going mad. Listen. <laughs> you know, the guy that can't hunt has actually provided all of the food 
and there's also some sago grubs here as well to it actually eating. Delicious. <laughs> Back hard. Oh. oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's pretty grim. <laughs> oh dear. Key to the Mac and any. Hey. Daisenang Kamu Ambil and Tokita. Saisenang Scali. Tara Makasi Banyak, yeah. There's no doubt that these two are utterly relied on each other out here. If one fails, they both fail. They're utterly alone. I know now, beyond any shadow of a doubt, that if I really was a Korowai man living out here, I'd be among the first into that village. I wish I could say that I'd be one of the ones that stayed out here, saw it out to the bitter end. My bones were left in the treehouse to be consumed by the rest of the forest. But I know I wouldn't be. I know, as part of Algus' generation, that I'd leave because it's just too hard to stay. This is my third trip to Korowai territory. And the more time I've spent here, the more obvious it has become that the Korowai are a tribe in transition. Most people have now left the forest and are pushing to enter the cash economy and the modern world. So I'm back in Mabul, on my way to the village of Mwara, where I hope to spend some proper time with August and his family. But first I need to pick up Perez, my translator, whose wife, like Amel, has also recently given birth. Perez! Taman! Bro, Afa Kava? Vague, vague. Right, right. Oh. Maguskali, yes. Tida Adorambo? Yeah. Yo. Yo. Botak lagi. Yeah? Botak lagi. Yeah? Maguskali. Oh. Anak bike? Oh, Anak sudah meninggal. Oh, mate. Kapan? Yo, Pak. Sudah bulan. Eh, bulan ini. Oh, maaf sekali. Yeah. Dia sakit mencret dan tiga hari lalu meninggal. This is Paris wife. Yeah, I know. So Paris baby is gone. He's gone. Ah, oh, maaf sekali. Yeah, mencret mencret. Oh maaf ya. Oh maaf sekali. Oh. It's very sad news, which Perez and his wife seem to be taking in such a matter-of-fact way. I remember August telling me that babies don't actually become people until they start to interact with you. They start to smile, show character. And because you can't really consider them people when they pass away, you don't really grieve in the same way. It's funny, I don't know, as long as this year continues, you know, now I'm starting to really get into it and it isn't just eating grubs and tree houses and stuff like that. You start to realise actually that, that there is, there's some real complexities to this culture that, that are very, very, very different and it takes spending time here to really see them. Hey. 
Ilawara has always had a reputation for being hostile to outsiders. And hard as it was living with Hope and Halap, they get the sense that things may be even harder in the village with August. Hello, Kita Kembali. Yo. <laughs> Bagus sights and hang. Bagus Barnabas? Yeah. Bike, bike? Bagus Kali. Bagus. Ada August? Bagus, yeah, blue or pit of the ball. Blue or blue. Give me the August in the case of the NK Burumaku. Oh, yeah? Yeah, did I think. Chinta. Hey. All right, mate? Yeah. <laughs> so, August isn't here anymore, is he? I know, I heard. What have you heard? I heard that uh, he went, the whole family went to the, like, a Sagu festival in the forest. So, something is going on in the forest, but not, not Hope and Halap House. So, not only is August not here, but almost all of the village isn't here. Not just this village, but the village upstream, the village downstream. And everyone is heading to a massive Sago festival, which starts tomorrow, a day's walk into the forest. It's something I've only ever read about. I've never seen it, ever. And if it's authentic and it's for real, it's gonna be possibly one of the greatest things I've ever seen. So I'm gonna try and get there to a village in between, hopefully make it there. This massive sago grub feast. It's a coming together of hundreds of Korowai. You know, these people that traditionally live all the way across this forest, this is the one thing that gets them all together. It's a really, really important date in the Korowai calendar. And to have arrived in Mwara the day before it happens, man, it feels almost too good to be true. Yeah, here we go. This looks more like the main road there, it's a the village. Man up, man up, man up. There's nobody here at all. It is a ghost village. And that's a good sign, I think, actually. I think that that means that this Sago grub feast actually could be for real. Cool. Masuk sini? Masuk. Okay, man up, throbo. Well, it's tenth times. I've made it to this village all right, but pretty much as soon as I arrived, people started to get a little bit nervous and it was decided that it'd be better if Perez and a couple of others went ahead and put our case to the organiser to see if I can get in and film. I've given him some cigarettes to hopefully sweeten the deal, but there's still no guarantee. to negotiate access to this feast. And then this happens. Blimey. That's enough of that. <laughs> Bike, bike saja. Bike, bike saja. Mereka bilang. Yeah. Silakan datang, tapi jalan-jalan saja tidak apa-apa. Jalan-jalan saja. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's great news. Well done, mate. Man up, Robo. Ah. 
It's a two hour trek deeper into the forest to reach the festival site. Oh yeah. This is a forest of sago palms. They're everywhere. There's sago palms dropped everywhere here. And the smell, I can just smell that fetid sago. Which means that these have been harvested for this festival and that we are getting pretty close. Sydney, yeah? Oh, I can see a clearing. I think we might already be there. Look at this. It actually, it really is just a clearing in the middle of the jungle. Man, it's like a mirage. Yo, Siang. 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 Manop. Manop Tropo. Nama siapa? Manop. Manop. Judas. Judas. Oh, ini Judas. Wow, Judas. Ini untuk kamu. Terima kasih, ya? Terima. Terima. I'm looking now, I can see probably a hundred meters, just long line of uh, huts and then a, a really big hut in the background. August could be here somewhere. Oh. Siang. Salamat Siang. Siang. Manop, Manop. This looks like the biggest hut of them all. The main stage, possibly. Wow, Manop. Manop Tropo, Manop Tropo, Manop, 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 Wow, Bakar Batu. This is the biggest Korowai oven I have ever seen. We've literally just walked into a jungle clearing and this industry is going on. I really thought that I was never ever going to get to see this. And this is just the beginning. There's still hundreds of people on their way here. Perez tells me that preparations for the feast began three months ago, with the cutting down of dozens of trees that had been used to farm the sago grubs. Now they're fat, they're baked into giant sago flour pizzas, cooked on hot stones and ready to be served to the clans as they arrive from the surrounding villages. To get here, to see something absolutely genuinely unique and traditional, which is being run by two fellas in football shirts and shakes. Absolutely brilliant. 